Hey, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. As you may or may not know, I had surgery a few months ago and it was quite the experience. Not in a good way, but it definitely made me stronger. I wanted to make this video to help others that will be going through scar face surgery or wisdom tape removal by letting you in on some tips, tricks, and things that help me get through it all. I just want to disclaim real quick that this video is obviously more targeted towards surface surgery, but some of the things can also apply to people going through wisdom tooth removal surgery as well. I got both done at the same time, so that's why I'm mentioning both here. All right, without any further ado, let's get right into the video. So the first thing that is essential to recovering is ice. So what I mean by this is no, not the ice on your wrist or on your neck. Haha, uh -huh, I'm so funny. Not. I'm talking about literal ice cubes and ice packs. My advice is to have more than one ice pack on hand because you don't want to have to wait till the ice pack freezes up so you can use it again. You want to have that ice ready so you're not in pain. So you want to be icing your face constantly the first couple days, 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, in order to help with the swelling as well with the pain. And yes, you're probably thinking holding an ice pack on your face with your hand all day will get annoying and trust me it is. This is why I recommend keeping this ice head pack that you get from the hospital it's gonna come in handy for sure. I got it from the hospital, but I don't know if every hospital gives this out. So if you don't have this, then you can use a long sock. So get some socks. If your socks aren't long enough, just tie a knot on both ends like this and the other way. And then you got yourself a head wrap. And then you can just put ice packs on both sides. I'm gonna go get ice packs so I can demonstrate. Um, hold up. Ta da! I look crazy, but um, also this ice pack is way too big. But you get the concept, right? So, next is heat. So, I was told that after 72 hours post op, I should apply heat to my face. So you're gonna wanna get a microwavable heat rice bag or gel pack. This is also 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. Okay, so this is a rice bag. You just pop it in the microwave for, I don't remember how much, I think like a minute. And, and here's a magic bag. This one is freezable and uh, heatable, so you can do both with this one, which is pretty cool. Okay, so next is gauze. On the day of the surgery, when you come back home, you're probably gonna bleed from your mouth or your nose. I was told that it's normal and that I should keep the gauze that they gave me at the hospital in my mouth until the bleeding stops, but if the gauze that they gave you is too soaked, then you should change it. Um, so I got some gauze like this. Unfortunately, it wasn't the circular ones like they gave me at the hospital, but what you can do is just roll them up into like a cylinder, and if they're too big or too long, then you can cut them and put them in your mouth. Oh, and if you're bleeding a lot, like excessively, then you should definitely contact a doctor or your surgeon. Um, just to make sure everything's okay. Now we're gonna get into the hygiene part of the recovery. So I had this mouthwash prescribed to me by the surgeon. It is called Paradox. I started using it the day after the surgery and I use it like twice a day to rinse my mouth to prevent gingivitis, which is the inflammation of the gums. You do not want that, so make sure you rinse your mouth. If you don't have Paradox or you're not prescribed Paradox, I was told by my surgeon um, that I could also use um, regular mouthwash like Listerine 
but make sure it is alcohol free to avoid dry socket. So I also rinsed with a warm water and sea salt solution that I made uh, a few times a day as it also acts as an antiseptic. I, dead ass, could not brush my teeth for like three days after the surgery. I know what you're thinking, nasty. Anyways, I don't think you're supposed to go in there. I was scared to, I don't know, mess things up or whatnot. So if you're not able to brush your teeth like only a few days after, it's normal, I couldn't. On the third day, I got a baby toothbrush. Do you like it, Winnie the Pooh? Fun fact, Winnie the Pooh used to be my favorite when I was a kid. Nostalgia. <laughs> so on the third day, I was able to gently brush my teeth with water only, and then I would rinse my mouth out with mouth wash. I wouldn't spit, I would just let the mouth wash kind of fall out of my mouth so that I don't dislodge the blood clots that were formed at the site of extraction of my wisdom teeth. There's something called dry socket, look it up. It's important not to, you know, spit or suck too much because you can dislodge those blood clots. Okay, so the day after the surgery, I woke up and I just remember my nose being blocked and like I could just feel like there was a lot going on in there. Like I felt like there was dried up blood and gunk and it was nasty and I couldn't really breathe through my nose. And so my uh, surgeon told me that I could get a nasal spray. So I went to the drugstore and I got Salinex and that really helped me out. It, I just, I think you just put like, yeah, one spray one to three times per day into each nostril and yeah, it really helped me to breathe better. So I do recommend getting a nasal spray if you don't have one. Next is my ultimate favorite, lip balm. People that don't use lip balm and their lips are always hydrated, like I don't get it. Are you a different breed? Because I can't relate. <laughs> like, my lips are always dry AF, like a desert up there. I love to just put on some lip balm, so, um, you know, got some Carmex, some Bates Bees, some Vaseline, whatever it may be. Just make sure you got some on hand because even something just as simple as a lip balm can make your experience just a little bit better. So that's it for hygiene. Moving on to food. Now, food is a big one. People are probably worried about if they're gonna be able to eat, if they're gonna be starving for the next two weeks. I get it. I was not excited about that because I love food. And just eating liquids for two weeks, Man, that's tough, but surprisingly, I was not hungry, and let me tell you why. So, I had plenty of homemade soups in the freezer, ready to pop in the microwave, thanks to my family. I recommend making a bunch in advance and putting it in your freezer. If you don't happen to have any, or just don't have the time, you can always buy pre-made period soups at the store. I got three and they lasted me like five days. Next, my holy grail, Ensure. These babies right here, they saved my life. I was not hungry because of them. But I'm aware not everyone likes the taste of Ensure, especially when you have to mix them with drugs and painkillers, antibiotics, etc. It can scar you for life. I definitely get that because I had to take an antibiotic that tastes like death and I had to take it with Ensure and like it kind of made me not like the taste of Ensure anymore and I was like, hold up. No, this is not happening. So I recommend getting at least like three packs, there's six in a pack. So if you can have like, you know, almost two per day or even three per day, then that's good. I was lucky my surgeon office actually gave me a bag and I think gave me a few insurers in there to kind of help me out because unfortunately they're not prescribed. They're things that you have to buy um, from your own pocket at the drugstore or at Walmart or whatever. Um, I'm pretty sure they're cheaper at Walmart, 
but yeah, it's not too bad, you know. Oh, and also, personally, I really prefer the Protein Max ones. These ones are a little thicker, I guess, and they really filled me up and made sure that, you know, I felt full during the day. And they also give you energy. There's a lot of protein in here, so yeah. Also, protein shakes. I got this vegan one because I'm vegan and yeah, you're probably saying like, okay, but Insure has milk in it. Well, I find myself at the store and there's actually just a little bit of milk and I could not find any soy milk ones. I, I don't even know if that exists, so. I mean, I had to survive, you know. This is really good as well, just to fill you up and to feel like you have some kind of nutrients inside of you. I definitely recommend getting some um, protein shakes and you can also kind of make smoothies with this. So you can throw in some bananas, strawberries, all kinds of fruits and make smoothies with protein powder so that you feel like you got some nutrients in you and you feel good. Next is snacks. So for snacks, I had some fruit pouches like this. These are the love child ones. Um, they're like the healthy organic ones. And yeah, they're for babies, but you're basically a baby while you're recovering. Other kind of snacks can be like applesauce, pudding, etc. Um, the first couple of days I wasn't able to actually have these snacks or like pudding and stuff like that just because it was too thick. And I could I could only have like broth and like thin liquids. I think a week after something I started having more thicker snacks, if that makes sense. Next is painkillers. So depending on, you know, what your surgeon prescribes to you, um, you will be getting painkillers that you have to go get at your drugstore. And I got ibuprofen, liquid ibuprofen. I got some Juroprofen, which is basically the same thing as uh, children's liquid Advil. So I would get about, I think, four boxes every time I would go to the drugstore. And so whenever I would be near to running out, I would have to go back to the drugstore. So just make sure you keep track of how much painkillers you have so that you don't run out because you do not want that to happen, sweetie. I'm telling you, um, if you don't have any painkillers, you're gonna be in pain. You don't want that. It's already not the best experience, so the painkillers are really what get you through it. So yeah, just make sure you have enough. Some people like syringes. I personally didn't. I prefer drinking out of a cup because I was able to, but if you're not, then syringes are excellent for controlling the amount of liquid that you want to ingest at a time. So, um, I think I got these at the drugstore. They just gave them to me. I'm pretty sure if you just go up to your pharmacist and be like, yo, I need syringes, they'll just give some to you. If not, they sell them at like Walmart or at the pharmacy. So. Next thing is get yourself a notepad or some post-its or just pieces of paper in general because the first couple of days I was not able to talk really well. Like you could I don't know, like some people could understand me, but some people couldn't. It's also like kind of difficult to and I don't know, personally I just didn't feel like talking because I felt like when I was talking, sometimes it would hurt actually. Um, so what I would do is I would get pieces of paper or I would write in my notes app on my phone and I would just show that to whoever I'm talking to. Some of my family members are a little hard of hearing, so it made it a lot easier to communicate more efficiently. Okay, last but not least are pillows. Yes, pillows, you use them every night, but when you're recovering, you're gonna have to use them all the time because you're gonna want to keep your head elevated as much as possible, so whenever you're lying down, Make sure you have at least like two pillows behind your head so that it's elevated enough. And I recommend getting this type of pillow right here. I'm just gonna put it on the screen. 
I didn't get it, but if I would have planned in advance, I would have gotten this because it's just like, it's perfect. You know, you can just like sit up and rest. And yeah, you don't need to deal with two pillows being uncomfortable. But um, yeah, also at night, uh, make sure you sleep with your head elevated as well. I'm not exactly sure the whole science behind this, but my surgeon did tell me that whenever you're lying down in bed, that's when the swelling actually gets worse. So by keeping your head elevated, you um, you know kind of control the swelling a bit. Oh. Also, I saw this mask online and I was like, oh my gosh, I should have gotten that for my surgery. It would have like, it honestly would have helped me out because my face was extremely swollen. Let me insert some pics. So, yeah, I would have definitely benefited from a mask like this. If you have the time to get something like that, um, definitely do so. I just think it would be cool purchase for your recovery. I didn't get it, but it's just an idea. Alright, that's about all the tips and tricks that I have for you guys. Don't hesitate to ask me any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them and to make your life a little less miserable during that time.